Kurt Wise took me from one fascinating place to another, showing me evidence of fossil forests, explaining the rapid formation of coal, and talking about the complex design of biological systems. Everywhere we turned, he showed me something new about the Earth and its history. We ended up at the entrance to an old abandoned coal mine. This is leftover remains of the Dayton Coal and Iron Company, built oh. about 100, 110 years ago. Well, what's amazing is uh, if, if you didn't know that history and if you looked at these rocks, you would think they were very ancient. In fact, if we were in Greece, we might think they're thousands of years old. <laughs> it's hard but to tell just looking just at the looking structure at it. itself. Well, Kurt, then I need for you to do something me because I know that the conventional paradigm looks back in Earth history, and it's a straight line. A lot of uniform processes and so forth. But the Genesis history is telling us that it's, a, it's not that uniform. Yeah, that's a good point. In 2 Peter chapter 3, it talks about people in the latter days saying, where's the promise of his coming? For all things continue as they were from the beginning mm -hmm. of the creation. Mm -hmm. That concept mm -hmm. that what you see in the present, what's happening right now, What's happening in the creek down below, what is happening in every place on the earth, is the way it's always been. It's always been for all of earth history. The passage goes on to say, for this they are willingly ignorant. Mm -hmm. They're not just ignorant of these truths, they're purposely rejecting these truths, and it lists the, the creation and the flood. These are apparently events, according to the Bible, that aren't like the present. Right. And the neat thing is, that's what we see here. That cliff, isn't actually in place. That cliff it belongs about a thousand feet up. It slid down to its current location. Uh -huh. That's a pretty big boulder. That's huge, that's okay, massive. Okay, now, now what kind of process in the present slides blocks that big down? This mm -hmm. thing continues for a mile, mm -hmm. but inside those rocks are yet further evidence of an event before that that's even bigger, even more unlike the present. Mm -hmm. And then inside those rocks are also fossils of a time period that's very different than the present. Uh -huh. So that according to the claims of scripture and according to my own experience, you can't use the present to, to judge the past, to understand the past. But if you go all the way back to the beginning, you realize that the Bible lays out what I would call epochs of earth history. Periods Major periods that are of just, time. Just different things happening mm -hmm. during each of these epochs that if you lived in any one of the other epochs, you would never understand the previous epoch, because it's so different. The first one is the creation itself. In six days, God created the entire universe. He created the planets and the stars, and he stretched out the universe yeah. with his outstretched arm. That's obviously not happening today. <laughs> yeah. He's not creating planets. In fact, at the end of that passage, he says he ended his creation work. Mm -hmm. Then we move into what I call the Edenian epoch, the period of time when Adam and Eve are in the Garden of Eden. And it's right. very different than the mm. present. We get the impression from that passage, for example, that Adam and Eve, if they had not sinned, would have lived forever. It's hard to even conceive of human beings living forever. So it's a different so, world, mm -hmm. wildly different. Mm -hmm. How long it lasts, we don't know, but it's suddenly terminated with Adam and Eve eating of the tree of the knowledge, good and evil, Rebelling and against God them. cursing the creation. Mm -hmm. He changed the rules. In the, in the universe. Now no longer is the sun gonna be able to burn forever. No longer are we gonna be able to live forever. So it's and, hard for us to even imagine what very, that would be like because and, we only see the laws are. And we present. wouldn't have come to that conclusion if mm, we didn't have true. the word of we God. We didn't have this. Mm -hmm. we, and, and that's what I think the word of God has been given to us right. for. So we slide into the third epoch of time, what I call the antediluvian period, the period before the flood and after the fall of man. Uh -huh. It's a world that's different than the present. It's got the yeah. same natural laws going on, mm -hmm. but it's a different set of critters, different set of plants. Yeah. It's a little bit warmer earth. The continents are in different positions from what they are now. It looks significantly different. Well, that's what we see in, in Peter, where it talks about that world being destroyed. So the flood was not just soaking everything. This is radical, radical change, wasn't it? Yeah, if we're right about what we've understood so far, we got continents moving, smashing together, creating mountains. Mountains are rising to tens of thousands uh. of feet. You've got water washing across entire continents. 
we're, we're ripping tens of uh, thousands of feet of sediment off of the old continents and then depositing thousands of feet of sediment on top of them again. Yeah. It's, we're looking at it's, earthquakes of astonishing power. So this change then from the, what you call the antediluvian epoch, now into uh, the post-flood. Basically, the, the Earth has got to recover from a global flood. The atmosphere has got to recover, the geology, the rocks have to recover, plants and animals have to spread across the Earth. You got lots of water, humongous earthquake, humongous volcanoes, and more or less that period of recovery is a slow decrease in intensity and frequency of those things. So would it be in that period that we would see the Ice Age, for example? Yes, that's uh, ironically, the Ice Age turns out to be, in our modeling, a consequence of the heating of the water during the flood. Water is evaporating off the oceans, that cools the oceans. Mm -hmm. The water is then moving over the continents and dropping enormous volumes of water. Now in certain places, the rain's gonna come down as snow. But coming okay. down so rapidly and without break that it can't melt and accumulates into thick sequences of ice mm -hmm. until yes. they're miles thick. Uh -huh. And then when the oceans had cooled enough that that rain generation system had stopped, then those glaciers then they collapse started. under their own weight, melt back to the current position, and they're continuing to melt. You know, this thing, global warming, it is, it's, it's recovering, the Earth is still recovering uh -huh. from the flood. So that was really a fairly tumultuous era uh, right then, and, but then you have one final epoch. So the modern epoch mm -hmm. is uh, you can study present processes and understand things fairly readily back to Yes. within a couple centuries okay. of the flood. And so that would lead one to think that these processes, if you take them all the way back... Precisely. Right. You take the present processes and extend them into the back. And, and that's what Second Peter says. That's the error people make. It's right. reasonable. Take sure. the present and extend mm -hmm. it into the past. Mm -hmm. Not unreasonable. So you need to go to the Bible to find out the necessary information mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. to reconstruct yep. it. And looking at it the other way, if you start from the Bible, you only get the beginning of the story. Right. God has given us the ability to read the rocks and fill in the rest uh, of the story. Yeah. And we need to, to fully understand the flood. We start with the Bible, but then we go to the rocks. Then Speak to the rocks and they shall tell you right. what has happened in the yeah. past. Kurt made a good point. The Bible records historical events, but it doesn't explain how those events happened. That's what these scientists were doing. They were trying to interpret the evidence in light of biblical history. But Kurt said there was evidence inside the rocks. What was that evidence? Thank you.